Okay, when you've decided you're ready to let your animal out, um, you need to have a nice long rope. And you can see in this case, of course we've got the rope halter on, we've just attached another rope, and we're going to open the crush and pull them up to the fence. Now of course it's the first time that the halter is really having an effect on the animal's freedom, they may or may not go a little bit mental. So we've got one person on the other side of the fence, whose job is to pull the rope up so that the steer doesn't get tangled in its legs or whatever. And the other person is here to help guide and actually pull it and organize it a little bit again so the steer doesn't get tied up. But the person who's in here pulling this rope out needs to keep their eye on the steer so they can get out of the road if they need to. So we're planning on the steer coming out, kind of pulling it toward him that direction. And if Ellie's guiding him out, she'll be watching the steer and then she'll be able to back off that direction over there, or get away from the animal if he happens to go a little bit emotional. situation you've got to not just tie them up and walk away because these animals can get themselves upside down legs heads or whatever through rails as you can see and seriously hurt themselves or um, damage somebody so you need to be aware of what's going on and when they first start it's probably best not to have it tied off so that you can quickly release it if you need to and if you've got two animals like we're going to have here you need to have them well apart You need to have them well apart so that they don't jump over each other's rope and get themselves tied in knots. You can see that the rope is a nice long rope. It's connected to that um, halter there with one rope. We didn't have to join these. And we're pulling the steer up the same as before, keeping the slack off the ground so the steer doesn't get tied up with it. And if you look there, we can see that there's a little bit of a mess with the ropes, a bit tangled up. So this helps to have, it would help if you have someone organized with your rope wrapped around the rail and someone getting rid of the spare rope at the back so you don't get tangled up like we have here. 
Now we've got him hooked where we want and don't put your fingers in the rope. Be prepared to let it go if he pulls so you don't get your fingers snapped off. You'll also notice that the rope is above that rail so it keeps his head up. If you um, put it along a rail they can slide along the rail as well which gives them a lot more room to move which you don't particularly want at this stage. So around an upright post so that keeps them where you want them. Now these two could be a little bit further apart but they seem to be going okay. As you can see the difference between the two animals one's taken it a lot more to heart than the other. When you do tie them up you need a quick release knot. Now there's more than one quick release knot so whichever one you choose is fine as long as it does hold when the animal's on there and you can let it go quickly. The idea of a quick release knot is if the animal gets itself in an awkward position you can quickly release it so it doesn't end up choking itself or, or damaging something. This one we use at Bombardieri High School. It's like tying your shoelace the first part of the knot except you don't pull it all the way through so you end up with that little loop and then simply you start braiding. You put that loop through the loop and continue doing that till you get to the end of your rope. We teach the kids this so that every kid no matter what year they're in all know the same knot so they can all work at the same no matter who's um, involved with the animals. Now you can see the rope being released really quickly and we'll do it again. You can see we just poke a loop through like starting to tie your shoelaces but we don't pull it all the way through. There's our loop, that's actually the knot. You can see me pulling against it, that will actually hold the steer. This is just a locket so it can't work its way through. Now as we get to the end here you can poke the end of your rope through and that will lock it. As you can see there that's locked so it can't come loose but you've got to be aware of that so you can pull that out like that so you can then release it. So you can lock them but if you've got enough braid it will just hang there usually and there you can see the release knot. Righto, once you've got them tied up and settled enough that you feel confident to get in and approach them it's best to do it at a distance because they can sting swing around, they can kick, they can still jump up in the air so you don't want too many people involved and you start at a bit of distance. We use this length of poly pipe just to keep us out of the strike zone and we just start touching the animal. Some will be very testy and will react really quickly to that, others it doesn't, that doesn't worry them too much. So just start them being getting used to being touched and as I said you're at a distance so if they swing or kick you're not going to get damaged. Usually start it around the shoulder and work your way along. Some animals you'll find will be really touchy around their feet or under their belly perhaps. Um, so you just have to work with the animal you've got and, and keep your eye on them and be conscious about what you're doing at all times. Our ultimate aim is to get the animal's um, flight zone reduced so that we can actually get closer and closer to them so that we can then ultimately um, brush them. You can see this is the animal that was bouncing around a fair bit but he settled down okay and um, we're working along the top of him there working towards the back and we've got someone on the other side too so ultimately again if you can get two people involved in this case Connor's on the outside he could be you um, brushing or rubbing as well with the cane or the poly pipe I should say so that they get used to being surrounded. You can also do this in the crush if they're really really feisty just have people brushing them all in the crush so they don't uh, risk getting damaged. Now you can see he's pulling on the halter but not too badly and he just moved out of position so then we want to just readjust and come back in to keep touching him. You see Ellie's going to approach the second steer now same thing just coming in at the shoulder and just rubbing along his top line having a bit of a chat to him this is why uh, if you name your steers you can have a conversation with them just tell them that they're doing a good job and um, again bit by bit you get the feel for how the steer is responding 
you can slowly work your way in and get closer. But again, you need to be paying attention so that if the animal does move abruptly, you can get out of the road. And some people even go to the point of having like rags and flappy bits on the end of the stick that they rub along there to get them used to different things. But we've always found just doing this and then slowly moving into getting a, a hand on them and using, using the brush works quite successfully. You can see there's no pressure on the lead. He's just standing there. He's not pulling on the halter and he's looking fairly relaxed. His tail's not flicking around anymore. He's looking pretty calm. Oh, there's a bit of a tail flick, but that's just the flies. And there we go. So that's uh, that steer's responding really quite well. And there's our more flighty fella, and he's even being scratched on the back of his neck there, on top of his head. That's a bit awkward from outside to reach very far. But, and at all times, this is a section where you need to have kids being calm and quiet around them so you don't stir them up so that the person in there isn't put at risk and make sure you've got plenty of room around them so you have escape routes. Plan that before you uh, get in there with the animals. And now we're about to take the halter off. You need, that was pretty simple. I like to grab it on the ear with the ear tag so that you don't risk the halter getting hooked over his ear. That was a rope halter, so we just pull it over that ear and they usually take a step back and you drag it over their face. And with the um, other halter, simply undo the buckle and it will drop off the front of their face.